Welcome to the RLM Podcast. I am your host, Eli Detter, and what you just heard is the opening to uh, my guest host today, uh, Jacob Myers. He uh, actually, he, uh, that was his song on Spotify. It's called Made For. Um, we're actually here to talk about that and discuss that today. So, um, J- uh, Jacob, feel free to introduce yourself, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's up, guys? My name is Jacob Myers. Um, dude, it's just an honor just to be able to talk with you, Eli, on the podcast today about music and about God and my faith. Um, I'm 22 years old and currently just like a college student. And yeah, man. So, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. awesome that, um, I mean, I saw this about, uh, maybe what it was about two weeks ago. Um, I saw that you had posted this, posted a reel on, um, on Instagram, and I was like, "What's this?" <laughs> so I was like, "Oh man, he made a song." I searched first thing I did, I searched that up. I started listening to it. I was like, "Dude, dude, this is dope. This is awesome." Um, I I respect people who put you know music and content on Spotify so much because that's something I've always wanted to do. But I I I'm never I'm not a lyrics guy. I'm more like I make beats. Like I do beats. I do oh, like. I I do like R and B beats, like that's the stuff type of stuff I do. So like, yeah. you know, mad props to you for doing that. That's awesome. Um, and and I, I, just, I, the moment I saw that, I was like, I got to take the moment, I got to take the chance to uh, get him on the podcast and talk about that stuff because that's that's awesome. Um, for sure, bro. So I mean, I, I mean, I just want to ask you. I mean, how did you? I mean, I know you said that God just kind of put those words into your soul. How did you just explain that to us? Yeah, bro. Um, so. I'm not gonna lie like the i would say the last two years um the lord has increasingly put music uh on my heart just to produce it and to write it um and i was and i would say two times in the last two years i've had people prophesy over me about music Mm -hmm. um the one time i was i I was pushing carts at a grocery store named uh called giant in harrisburg and um i see this truck pull in i'm just pushing carts like you know doing my shift and on the side of his truck, like, you know, how people have bumper stickers about Christianity. Yeah, it's like, yeah. like Jesus loves you. Or like, do you follow Jesus as closely? Like, you know, on yeah. the back of their car, this guy had like stuff on his side windows about the Holy spirit. And I'm like, all right, that's kind of interesting. Like this guy probably is like legit. So I just, he parks and I, and I like walk up to his window. I'm kind of weird, but I walk up to his window and I like point to put the, like ask him like, yo, put the window down. And I basically, I'm like, dude, are you like a Christian? Mm-hmm. And he kind of testified. Um, and he, we kept talking and he said to me, he said, and I've never met this guy before, but yeah. he's like, he says two things. He says, one, he's like, you have a calling, um, and youth ministry over your life. And then the second thing he said, he said, you're gifted in music. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, um, so I kind of put that in my back pocket, right. you know, that prophetic word. I didn't like immediately start making music, but I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know if you know who the second time, the second time someone prophesied over me about music. Um, you know, Will, he helps, he helps me lead the, uh, yeah, the middle school, middle school boys at, at reality. Yeah. Um, he, the, I meet him the first time I meet him, bro. He's, we go at the youth group and he, and he starts prophesying over me and he says, I just see lyrics over your life. Um, and that was in 2021. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, I would say about five months ago, lead up to about five months ago, um, I began to work. I was. I just got back from a missions trip, so I wasn't able to earn money. But right. I, be, I work at a wedding venue now. I'm saving up money, and I'm able to buy equipment mm-hmm. to how to record music, pro, uh, mix and master music, yeah. and then upload it eventually. And so, so I began to buy this stuff, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. The song "Made for" it took me like a month and a half to make. Oh wow! The entire time, bro. I'm like, I found. I got this beat, bro. Cause I don't, I don't produce a beat. Like I right. try to, um, and, and a lot of people that do rap, like they don't make their own beats. They have, right. you know, right. people that do it for them. So, um, found this beat. It was almost like a, an R and B, like Drake beat kind of yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah. And I start writing lyrics and I didn't like have a, an idea for the song. Cause you know, like the way that God works, I've seen it in my life and just like reading the Bible, bro. It's like, God will give you the first step. But then he won't give you the like the next ten steps because right. he wants you to have faith to take that first step, right. yeah. and then he'll give you the rest. Because if he gives you the whole cookie, bro, you don't. There's no faith in it. And yeah. so, and so, I, I just I buy this beat and I start writing lyrics, bro, and they just start flowing. 
took me maybe like a week, bro, to write it, a week and a half. Um, Cause I was, I was busy and stuff, but I wrote the lyrics, bro. Um, and it, dude, it was, it's so fun, bro. And I find like when I'm doing what I'm made for, like made for when, when I'm yeah. doing what God has made me to do, bro, like it's, it's when I feel most alive, to right. be honest with you. So that's kind of like a little bit of a background of how yeah. Made For came about and just a little bit of the music. Yeah, um, I mean, when you were making it, um, was there anything just like, I, I guess when, when you were making, when you were trying to come up with like the words, did, did you kind of just like find it all along the way or did you kind of go into it already being like, hey, you know, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to write about. I know what this, I want this song to be about. You know, I, I didn't have, um, so I knew I wanted to glorify God. That, that's the first thing, bro. Um, I didn't have an actual specific thing. What, what I did was I started with the, the first half of the song, the, the, the verse one. And then typically I know in songs like the the main theme is the chorus. The right. That's, that's repeated. And so um, after I did the first chorus, I was like, okay, I want it to be called Made For. Because that was kind of like the theme in the chorus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of what I felt like God gave me. And so then the second half of the song, after I found figured out like the chorus is gonna be that, like, you know, drinks out on the table, if that's not what you're made for. Yeah. Um then the second half of the, the, the lyrics, I catered it towards being made for God. Um and that kinda I kinda had clarity on the second half of the song. I really wanted it to be about that. Yeah. Um and it just ended up working out pretty well. Yeah, I mean I think that's amazing. I mean <clears throat> it's that is a lot kind of like how I got into the whole um how I got into the whole podcasting thing. I mean, it was just, yeah. I mean, in, uh, for those listening in the most recent episode that you'll watch, I had actually, I will talk about that. Um, just about how, when it was all the stuff that had been going on just with my mom and stuff like that, you know, I was, I was looking for something to do. I was looking for something to get my mind working on and stuff like that. I mean, and I think God allowed me to find podcasting, and and I, and I don't know exactly what, why God said this is what you're gonna do because I had I was thinking oh I can make some music you know like I I, I actually <laughs> it's actually funnily enough I do actually make music I actually uh, there's this online community band lab that I use um, yeah it's and, and I that. I make a bunch of music on there I was actually part of like an online band for a little bit <laughs> making some wow. making a couple beats and stuff like that I actually helped create a couple songs. And I was like, that was fun, but like, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't exactly. I mean, a couple of people were like, "Hey, you know, do you want to make music for us and we'll pay?" I'm like, "No, I'm good." <laughs> but like, yeah. it was just, it was just, you know, it, it was fun. But I, I think I, I think the podcasting, it was something that was like, God was like, this, this is like you said. I mean, this was you were made for this. You were, or this at least this is something that you can become great at. And I mean, now look, I know I'm, I'm doing all sorts of stuff that stemmed uh-huh. from. You know, starting with the podcast, now I do photography and videography and do stuff for school newspaper and all that crazy stuff. So it was like, you know, God really does, when we show that we are interested and we show that we acknowledge him in our lives, he really does open those amazing doors for us. And it just leads us to places that we would never have dreamed of being. Yeah, bro. I, I think I love that, bro, that you're super creative, bro. I can see that God's <laughs> giving you vision, bro. And something that there's a verse, I think it's in the early half of the book of Psalms and it says take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart yeah and I just found like in my life bro like when I delight in him he's put passions in me that, yeah. that flourish when I delight in him yeah. bro and I can see it in you bro like just a <laughs> podcast and like even like your willingness to try something that you didn't seem that didn't seem like it fit you but you still right. took that faith like that leap of faith and then god's like okay i can trust eli i'm gonna give him this and i know he's gonna he's gonna actually like pursue it yeah dude that's so cool yeah i mean it's i mean as much as i would love to take you know <laughs> take credit for it, i mean i had obviously i started with the, po- the podcast with a good with a friend of mine uh, Stephen pitts he was uh he was very he helped me a lot because he kind of took because i had a lot of views i was like oh my gosh we can do so much stuff for this you know my head was just filled with ideas and he was like you know take it take it one step at a time be stay realistic with it you know keep it you know keep it engaging keep it something that you know a lot of people can relate to and i think that definitely helped shape it and you know my parents helped and friends helped and you know even people telling me oh you know your podcast suck or oh you know you know your podcast is great all the feedback that I got from him was awesome because it helped me realize, okay, so I can see what people like and what they're not liking. Like I could see, you know, the episodes that people were listening to more or, 
um, just just the way that people were responding to them. And I, once I yeah. started gaining that stride, you know, I mean, it it, it feels awesome. <laughs> I mean, it, it, does, it man. just it feels great. I'm, and I know that I mean, this is your first song. I'm first sure song. you'll make plenty more. And I know that I mean, I I, I know you're you're gonna you're gonna get to that spot where you're just like this this is perfect. You know, Pe- people people. When people start to recognize you for that, and they start to be like, "Oh man, you made that song," you know, you're 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 that Jacob Myers that you know that that's gonna feel great, yeah. man. I, I, it's one yeah. of it truly is, it's one of the most humbling feelings, but also mm-hmm. like one of the best feelings I've ever had. Yeah, dude, I feel like I'm ex- I'm excited, bro, and like, and like you said, bro, about the podcast, like taking it one step at a time, like, um. I, I just feel like for me, I can catch myself like being like a, like a year ahead in my mind than where I'm actually at, and it can almost feel overwhelming. Kind of like what you're talking about, like slow down, take yeah. a breath, <laughs> go one step at a time, yeah. bro. Um, because like I don't know, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself, and I think that God is like telling me, and I want to know kind of where you're at with this too. Like mm-hmm. for me, I feel like God is saying, Jacob, like just make a song. I, I'm like a perfectionist, so right. I want to like make everything right sound perfect right and i feel like the lord's saying like i want you to make the song and and actually release it even if you don't think it sounds good because yeah. one it can minister to somebody you know a podcast you don't like it can minister to somebody and also it's like almost dying to my own reputation or yeah. like fear of man like oh what if someone doesn't like it like like yeah i'm being obedient to what god has for me bro right you know what i'm saying right i mean right. i mean I, I think I, when I first started, I was definitely all like, oh, you know, I'm going to do this and no one's going to care. No one's going to like it and all that stuff. But I think at some point I I started, I definitely noticed something that happened. I think it was so in, in December, uh, my whole family, we went to North Carolina for like an entire month. I wasn't at school for a month. It was like, it was like huh. the greatest month of my life. It was awesome. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I had my family around me. I was <laughs> down at the beach. It, it was so nice. And I think I, I remember coming back from that and I had a completely different like attitude and perspective. And during while I was down there, I was making, you know, little bonuses and it would be like on the spur of the moment. Like I would just feel this almost this message just coming to me when I was walking along the wow. beach. I would just, you know, be looking yeah. out along, you know, out at the sea halls and the birds and all that stuff and the beauty of God's creation. And. And I, I almost felt like someone was talking to me and giving me these mm. words to say. I mean, just like just like you're saying, you know, giving giving me the words to say. And I, I would rush back to the house and I would get, get right, right to the recording. I'd start recording five minutes worth of just, you know, just words that were coming to me. And it wasn't the most sophisticated. It wasn't the most like, you know, it wasn't the best. But I was like, you know what? I don't I don't I don't know if I care. <laughs> you know, it's what right. it's what's in my heart. So why not share that? Um, and I think, you know, God, that's, that's where God saw that what he, what I was meant for. I mean, what, what I was made for, I was finally becoming, and I came back from that month and I remember being a completely different person. I remember just being very different in how I, uh, and how I was, I wasn't so focused on, you know, people giving me attention and stuff like that. People, you know, yeah. I didn't need someone to tell me how good my podcast was. I wasn't worried about that. You no, know, I wanted to do it because I wanted to help other people. I wanted to show other people, hey, you know, I'm not great at this, <laughs> but I'm at least doing it. You know, yeah, it's something yeah. that I enjoy. You know, I have fun. It's powerful. You know, I have these awesome, powerful, almost heartbreaking conversations with people, and it's wonderful because it shows other people, the people that 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 do listen. I mean, I'm. It shows them, hey, this this is what people really go through, right? Mm. I mean, we don't see every side of people, but like this podcast is a great way for me to show that other side of me, the other side of other people that not everyone sees. It's it's amazing. And I'm sure it's that way with your music, right? I mean, I bet not too many people were like expecting just a, an awesome song to come out from you, and then they're like, wow, yeah. you know, it's it's amazing to see that. So yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, and I think like what you said about. Um... You, you went away and you felt like when you came back, you had clarity. Yeah. And you almost felt like you didn't care about what other people were saying. And yeah. I feel like, and I was, I was actually listening to one of your podcasts. I forget who it was with. I think it was like mm-hmm. a month ago. But you were talking about being yourself. Yeah. And I feel like when you know, like you almost had like you had an encounter with God. In yeah. The spirit, like walking on the beach or wherever you were at. It's like when you know more of like God and you, and you, you, you find yourself. 
yeah. the more you find God, the more that you know who you are. Right. And then, like you said, I just feel like you get more, it's more freedom to then do what you're made to do without right. the outside noise. And I find the people that like have such a close, intimate relationship with God and like, and like they do things, they are like actually the leaders. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're not trying to follow anybody other than like, the, like the Lord. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know. I just feel like there's like an authority when, when people step into what they're actually called for, like Eli, you're so good at doing podcasts, bro. Like you, God has given you like an authority in that area to right. then continue to move in that. And like, when you do things, I feel like when the, when it's like the will of the Lord, like he'll actually provide that way and give you the materials. Like, like you said, the words, bro, just yeah. to speak. And I think it goes a lot, like a long way. And bro, you're like inspiring so many people, bro. <laughs> like seriously. And you know, it's it's yeah, interesting. I I have gotten a, I have gotten a lot of messages from people who who you know listen to podcast and they're like, dude, that was that was amazing. That was powerful. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, thanks, man. But like, I'm like, I try I try to tell people, you know, whenever they message with me. And some people ask me, like, questions. Some people are, like, texting me, and they're like, hey, I've got this problem. I don't know if you can help me, but I would love your advice. I'd love your opinion and all this. And I'm sitting back like, this is insane, right? Someone is, yeah. <laughs> Someone's coming to me and asking for my opinion on this. And I'm just like, dude, I, I don't know if I'm the dude you want to ask. And they're like, no, dude, I, I, wanna, I want your opinion. That, that was like, oh, my gosh. Like, God allowed me to – be that person in someone's life that that they were like i think this dude might have might have an insight that that might help me a lot and i think that was awesome and it's just i i when i make these podcasts i truly never even expect to see like one or two people listen i never expect it and then i go on to and i see 15 people listen maybe 20 people missing on one episode there's 100 people listen to it and i was just like wow you know i mean that's I'm no Joe Rogan, but for <laughs> for a teenager in high school, that's pretty impressive. Like that's that's awesome dude, to see. That dude, that is awesome to see, and I love that. It's like your heart isn't to like get famous, although like right. you know, I mean, like that might come in time, but like right. you actually love doing it, and and I feel like God was saying to me like, what if like would you be okay with making a hundred songs, none of them blow up? Yeah. Would you be okay with that? Yeah. Because like at the end of the day, it's like, what am I doing it just? for like people to like right. look at me or am I yeah. actually doing it for his glory you know right. what I mean and I feel like yeah bro I love that you said that yeah. dude because you got that pure, that pure heart in there that's crazy like I I, I also like you know I've there are so many times I mean I've said this I think I think I've said exactly what you said multiple times is like I think the, it is the most important to reach that moment when you're like, dude, I could do I could make a hundred podcast episodes or you know like you said I could make a hundred songs I do not care if even if no one listened to it, I would love it because I'd have fun doing it. I would learn something about myself doing it. I'd learn something about someone else, you know, the people I'm interviewing, all that stuff about it. So it's like I, I don't even care if I don't see I don't even know I don't need to see fifty people listen to an episode. I don't need to see because I, I know God will get my message to the people it needs to get to. You know, I know God would not have allowed me to do podcasting if there weren't people out there who needed to hear my message. And I and I I think that's why God said you're gonna do podcasting because there are people who need to listen to your message. Not even if they don't want to, they just need to listen. Mm-hmm. And if if that if I I don't care, I don't need to ever get famous for doing podcasting. As long as I can help people while doing it, I'm I'm fine with that. Dude, I love that, bro. And I also love like just like the humility aspect of it with like. You're like, I don't even feel like you're saying people come to you for questions. Bro. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I can qualify <laughs> for it, man. Like, I feel like actually people want to, like, ha- people want, like, realness, bro. And our right. generation, like, they want something that's real and raw. Because I think our generation can so easily, like, like spot out BS or when someone's oh, acting yeah. or faking it. You know, and we don't want that. Like, I think we've been raised in that. And I just think, like you said, when, when someone's being authentic, like, yo, I don't know. I don't know, like. But people are drawn to that. We're drawn right. to that humility right. and that, that realness. And I think, it, yeah, you have that, dude. That's so that's so cool, man. I mean, it's it it's honestly it's it's weird the way God. I mean, God completely turned my life around about eight. I mean, I don't know. Um, it's gonna be <laughs> this summer. It will be soon coming up on a year. Just he completely wow. did a three sixty on my life. Just everything that had been going on. He, I, I remember i actually remember the week that that it had all happened 
it was it was the week after I'd found out that my mother ha had been admitted to an inpatient facility for just because she was, you know, her mental state and her physical state was terrible, and she had to go. And I remember that night, I'd come home from my summer job where I work at camp. That's a Christian camp. It's awesome. I love that job. And uh -huh. I remember being, I remember there was a there was a work dance. There was like a work thing. Uh, uh, we called it Kirk and Prom. It was like, you know, we went, you wore, wore nice clothes. We had some food and stuff like that. And I was like, Dad, I need, I want to go to this. And I remember doing that. And afterwards, that entire week, I felt so guilty because I was like, because I, I, I didn't know why I, I felt like I had to go to this thing. And, I, and there was nothing special that happened. I just, I think I needed to be in a place where I wasn't reminded of what was really happening. And I think I felt, I felt so damn guilty. I remember the one night I was on the couch in the lodge of my camp and I was just crying my eyes out because I was like, why did this have to happen to my mom? And I mm. felt, I was like, was this, was this my fault? Was this, was this because of the way I treated her before? And I, I was so confused and I felt, I mean, I felt terrible. I remember people were like, Eli, are you okay? Because I promise you probably very few people have ever seen me like cry the way I did. And it yeah. was, it was bad. And I, I, I remember God just, he reminded me that, you know, my mom had sent me a letter and told me, you know, it wasn't my fault that it, me, her getting sick wasn't my fault. She had sent it a couple of weeks beforehand and I didn't, and I was like, okay, you know, I was, and then this happened. And I was like, it wasn't my fault. And God just kind of was like, you know what? I think you could tell, I think he could tell I was, uh, I was sorry. I was sorry for all the stuff I'd done. And yeah. at the end of that week, I could feel something completely new and different awesome come over my life and like i said it was a complete 360 mm -hmm. and it just started that you know the path of i started doing more things i started getting involved in more stuff i started you know it, <laughs> literally september was the first time i'd ever gone out with a friend first time i'd ever gone to the mall with a friend I, I i was like i didn't even know what the inside of that mall looked like <laughs> Park, the Park, City Mall? Park City Mall never knew what the inside of that mall looked like until like some weekend in August and I was oh, like <laughs> I remember that day and I was like oh my gosh this is the first time I have wow. ever gone out with a friend it was like one of the first times I'd ever gone to uh, you know another friend's house it, it, was, it was insane I was just like I, oh, I let myself live in a way that just blocked me from all the all the parts of being a kid you know i didn't allow yeah. myself to be a kid and then all of a sudden i was becoming an adult and i was like wow i'd let mm. my teenage years i let my childhood years just slip away and i think god showed me that and he was like well now you have to you got to make an impact you know i wasted yeah. the first couple of years i, I got to make an impact these last couple you know and That's right. and you know like you said I, I think god god must see something that maybe it's maybe he doesn't need me to see yet but he I know that I'm willing to follow whatever he's leading me to. Dude, I love that, dude. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah. I, I know it's your podcast, but I just want to ask you a question, bro. Based, yeah. based off of like what, what you went through and your perspective now with that. Like, for anyone that's watching or listening, sorry, to this, um, and they feel like they've wasted a lot of years of their life that they feel like they can't get back, like, what do you have anything to say to them? Um, I would say don't look at it as... I can never get those years back. Think about what can I do to make those years up? What can I do to make that time be some be a time where I learned something? I I say this to some people and it, and it might be a little controversial just because of how some people might perceive its meaning. While I regret my actions, I don't regret the time because I think in that time God showed me a lot of stuff, God led me through a lot of stuff and he he forced me in a way to learn things about myself. So, like I, I mean, like I said, to, any, to anyone who, th who thinks, oh, I wasted years of my life. No, you didn't. You just didn't spend them the way you felt you should have. You just didn't spend them with the people you should have. But you learned something. You learned yeah. something about yourself. You learned something about other people. I, I mean, just, just from my own personal experiences, I can tell when other people are, you know, I, I mean, I can see myself in other people. When I see myself in other people, I'm like, dude, you got to stop that now because it, yes. it's a quick path. It's just a quick, it's a quick, bad path to, you know, and, and, you know, you slide down that path so quickly. And it's terrible. 
So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a great question, honestly. It's, you know, pe- people, you know, I say waste. I, I don't, for, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to use that. But it, yeah. I think, well, it's not time well spent. It is time that you can use to learn, for sure. Dude, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a beautiful perspective. I, I don't, I mean, like, you can learn from it, bro. And I think... I don't know. I think that's like when, when you're living with God, bro, like, and you allow God to speak to you, like nothing's wasted. Kind of like right. what you're saying. Like, it's not wasted, bro. Right. God can use like time that you felt like was wasted for his kingdom and to prune you and to Absolutely, like, yeah. you know, build you up. And I just want to read this, bro. Like the Bible even just talks about counting, counting it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds. Um, because God, I think, I don't know. I just think God does something in us in those times of like, we don't understand times of suffering or times of brokenness or confusion, bro. I just think that he builds your character. He builds like, he just builds, I don't know if, if we lived our entire life, like getting everything we wanted, you know, mm-hmm. we'd just be like a bunch of like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, <laughs> like snowflakes or yeah. just like super soft, bro. And I, I don't know. I think, yeah, lessons from god are, are so good and they suck in the moment but like, yeah yeah looking back though like bro like i went through things that i'm so glad i went through looking back yeah. because i'm not like, i would not be who i am today if i didn't go through, through absolutely things, like, the mental torment or like whatever it was you know so i, I think the beauty of life is that one <laughs> one i mean there's multiple things one the beauty of life the life is precious because it ends two wow life is also beautiful because we don't get everything we want but we go mm. through and we get everything we need yes bro <laughs> dude i love that bro because like you, like with god being our father it's like if there was a kid that just wanted dessert all the time bro and their parent gave them that dessert all the time the parent would not love them cause right it's like they're gonna die and like when they're like <laughs> 10 years old or something bro yeah like, but like if the parent forces them to eat what they don't want to eat but it's good for them right you know and like like you said bro god just they're not giving them what they want us, but they're giving right. what they need yeah bro sometimes when god when you pray for something and god says no it's because he actually loves you and right. has something better for you or it's just not the timing and right it's like well we trust god and yeah that, yeah dude <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's hard for some people to accept that you know because we you know for some people who are very quick to get skeptical about, you know, church and prayer and stuff like that, you know, because we say mm. if you really, really want something from, you know, really, really want something from God, you pray for it or, you know, you ask God, hey, I really, really need this in my life. Can I have it? And for people who do that and then God doesn't give it to them, God says no, then they're mm. like, well, you know, you said you said if I prayed for it and they're like, oh, we didn't say you necessarily get it. We just said pray for it. We can't yeah. control what happens, you know. All we can control is how we respond to it. It's right. If if we pray, if you know, I I pray every day that my mom gets better and that she mm-hmm. and she does. She continues to heal and she continues to get better. And it's amazing to see. If I may, I may pray for her to get better tonight. You know, say God, please just make her heal her tonight. God might not. Right there is a po- right. Po- there's a possibility God's not going to do that. But when that happens, I can't. I can't be like, "Oh my gosh, God, you suck!" You know, "Oh my God," you know. I'm past that. <laughs> you know, I'm past being like, "Oh my gosh, God, you suck." That that's not, there's no point in that. I have to be like, "Okay, well, you didn't heal her entirely tonight, but she is healed. She's healing. Mm. I, I can mm-hmm. feel that you're you're healing her. So I don't think you've left me. It's just this isn't mm. exactly what I was expecting. This isn't exactly what I. This isn't what I wanted. But maybe." I'm learning something from this. So maybe this wow. is something I need. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And I think like the Bible says about how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I think that when we pray for something, like you talked about your mother and it's like, okay, she's not healed right away. Right. But saying like he is God and I am not. And being like, not okay with it, but like surrendering right. that part of our hearts to right. him. Like, dude, there were times in my life, bro. So I had like, Something that I went through was like irregular heartbeats mm-hmm. and I would have like arrhythmia. I don't even know what it's called. And uh, I went to like the doctor and I got a thing on my chest. And this one time I was at my old high school and I was like praying to God. Like I was dealing with a lot of anxiety at mm-hmm. this time. It was like spring of 2021 and I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. And 
I was walking on this path, just praying, like a prayer walk with my book bag on and my speaker mm-hmm. in my book bag, like worshiping, but praying. And I like lay down on the grass, bro. And I get, I get these two like really hard irregular heartbeats and it, it, it fills me with anxiety. Yeah. Like I'm very scared when it, when it happens, it feels like I could die at any moment. Right. It's, it's not a good, good feeling. And I'm like, all right, got him done. Like I, I got so mad at him, bro. I got my car keys. I was walking down this gravel. Uh, it was an asphalt like mm-hmm. trail, and I throw my car keys because I'm out of anger, and it just slams on the on the uh, asphalt and it cracks open, bro. Yeah. The, my car keys broke, and um, cause I was so angry with the Lord, um, but like you said, like I had I had to learn like greater surrender to God. Yeah. Like there are parts of me that weren't surrendered to Him, um. And whenever you have some, when you, I just want to say this for anyone listening, whenever you're anxious about something, it's because you are still Lord over that in your own life and you haven't made God the Lord of it. Yeah. Um, and you're still holding on to it. And yeah. so when you're anxious about something, like it's good to release it. And so I was still anxious about certain things that the Lord was showing me that I need to release to walk in the actual freedom that Jesus um, died for me to have. Yeah. And God can't show his faithfulness to me until I actually trust him. That's so true. Because I will yeah. always... I will always make an excuse for some, some, like, why something happened unless I actually put my faith in him and then he shows me it. Yeah. So, like, dude, just in that time of my life, the Lord really um, didn't get, didn't heal me when I wanted to be healed. Right. But he was doing something in me that will last the rest of the, my life here on earth. And, I, you know, I'm just like, I'm thankful for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that, that yeah, that's mm-hmm. powerful. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. God... God shows through. God never leaves us. God never ignores us. He's always there, but he does. He knows better than anyone what is right for us. I mean, he's he's the one who helps helps lay the path for our destiny, and then we get to choose whether we want to follow it or whether we want to, you know, choose our own way and go our own way. And that's also and that's the amazing thing about God is he never forces us down a path. He gives us that choice. And then yeah. says, "Hey, you, you've got you've got this choice. You have you have the ability to go this way, or you have the ability to go that way. I'm not going to force you either way. Just know there are consequences either way." Um, and mm-hmm. then we are just like, "Well, do we want to follow God or do we want to follow ourselves?" You know, whether, if some people follow themselves and some people they make it. You know, they they get to where they want to be, but but they're ultimately they're not as happy as they would be if they went where God said, "Hey, this is where you were made to go." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. When they're made to go, man, they're yeah. that's what I'm saying. Made for they're 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 made for it. Yeah, and I think that's kind of just why we see like might be part of the reason why like people that have everything that they ever want are not happy or satisfied. Right. You know, like, because they don't have people. the things they need. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, and part of the part of like I guess surrendering to God or yielding to Him is like realizing that He is He is like my first and foremost need. Right. Because we were made to know him and he, that for him to satisfy our deepest belongings. And then everything else will follow. Like Matthew 6, 33, it talks about how Jesus is like, Jesus is preaching on like how like God feeds the birds, you right. know. And then at the end, he's like, seek first the kingdom and righteous and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. And I don't know, I just feel like in my life and just looking at other people's lives, when they seek God's kingdom first and in their relationship with him, like truly dude like everything else eli is is provided for right and like when we we when we flip-flop it and we try to like get everything ourselves um and put god on the back burner then we always feel like not, we don't ever have enough we yeah. always lack yeah so. yeah that's so true yeah that's mm-hmm. it is gosh i don't even know what to say it, it is wonderful just um to be able to, I mean, we're, we're in a time that we, we can, that people, you know, people that we have closer ability and we have almost, you know, there's people, in our, like you said, in our generation, we want something real. We want something that we can feel. And when we can feel that presence of God, it's mm. one of the, one of the most amazing feelings. It's truly, <laughs> it truly, I mean, it makes me happier than you know, any amount of money, any amount of anything can, could give me. It's just, it's, uh, you know, sure, money can make, money can get you, can allow you to buy things that make you happy, but God is what makes you feel fulfilled. That's so true, bro. He satisfies, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're made for him, bro. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, we yeah. are 
slowly running out of time here. I just got a little signal from <laughs> someone, mm-hmm. but um, it was wonderful having you on the podcast. Wonderful talking to you, man. Um, for anyone listening, just you know, there. Are, if there's one thing you can take away, one is listen to God's plan. You know, he'll t- he'll mm-hmm. talk to you in his own way. He'll tell you what you need to know. He'll he'll take you to places you need to go. Just go go with God because God knows what's right. God knows what's right for you. God God is the one who created us. God is above all. He is first and last. So, come on. Thank you so much, Eli, for having me on the podcast, man. man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. It was it was absolutely. Make sure y'all listen to Made for on Spotify. Um, is oh, it only on Spotify or is it on uh, other uh, other, platforms? On other platforms? Oh, yeah, nice. Apple Music, Pandora, yeah. Amazon Music. All awesome. Them, so. so yeah, make sure whatever uh, platform you listen to, make sure you take uh, about five minutes and listen to uh, Made For. Um, of course, you can find this podcast uh, at RLM Podcast on Instagram. Um, you can also find the podcast on um, uh, YouTube. Um, iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts, much as many more. You can find Jacob Myers at Jacob Myers um, on Instagram. Be sure to follow him and support him. I uh, hope you can. Cont- I hope you man. I hope you continue to make keep making songs, man. I'm gonna keep listening. I'm gonna keep uh, promoting them. It's awesome to see it um, for anyone who's uh, Christian and making music and stuff like that. God bless you, man. You're doing y'all doing great. Um, yeah, man. Just we we hope you have a wonderful day. Um, And uh, we hope you continue to listen to the RLM podcast.